Hare Krishna, good evening, dear devotees from uh, Sridham Mayapur. My name is Madhavananda Das, and the uh, devotees with the GBC SPT, they asked me if we would give a special class tonight at the end of Kartik about a very, very esoteric topic. It's a very high topic, but it's something that we should all have some understanding of. It's very important. And the topic is how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. And it's a fact. Krishna never leaves me. So I'm going to just say a couple of prayers and we'll go ahead and begin. Narayanam namaskritcham naram shaiva narotamam Devim sarasvatim vyasam tato jayam dirayat Vede ramayanesh shaiva purane bhadhate tata Adhavante chamadye chahari sarvatya giyate Mukam kodori vacha lampangum langayate girim Yad kripa tamaham vande shi gurum dinatadanam Gora draganya gana go to goloru haram Goranga buddha tamago piada kopa riksham Gopal hagada rati dam yati sing hagora Govinda deshi kavaram satatam namami Panchakopa the Dubischa, Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha, Patitanam Bhavanavyo, Vaishnavavyo, Namonama, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadha, Sri Dasari Gaura Bhante Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare right, Krishna, good evening, your devotees. So we're just saying, my name is Madhavananda Das, and we're going to speak something today, on a very special topic, the end of Kartik, how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Because for the last month, we've all been in Vrindavan. Singing every day, Nama Mishvaram Satchidananda Rup. Now we feel that we have to go back to our work, we have to go to this that place. But uh, we should understand that Krishna is always in Vrindavan and the devotees are always with him in Vrindavan. But how is that? It doesn't seem like we're in Vrindavan. When I'm in New York, it really doesn't seem like Vrindavan or Moscow or the Paris. They really don't seem like Vrindavan. Prabhupada in his prayer report, the Bhagavatam 6, 934. He says, the Brahma Sanhita says, The Supreme Person of Godhead Krishna is always situated in Goloka Vrindavan. Also says, Avanam Pratyaga Padikam T. Krishna never even a step from Bhavan. Nevertheless, although Krishna is situated in his own abode, Goloka Vrindavan. So both things are said. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's instruction from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Srila Rupa Goswami. When Mahaprabhu told him, you should write two dramas. And these became two of the greatest literary classics, perhaps the greatest literary classics, far beyond anything Shakespeare ever wrote. And the two greatest literary classics in the world, which are the two dramas, Solita Madhav and Bidagda Madhav. So Prabhu was instructing him that he told him, I'll go ahead and uh, sing this, and we can sing Hare Krishna responsibly. Krishna de Bahira Nahi, Kori Hapa Jahoite, Rajachari Krishna Kabu Najana Kahante, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Chila Prabhupada translates this. Do not, Mahaprabhu said, do not try to take Krishna out of Vrindavan. For he does not go anywhere else at any time. So, is that true? Hmm? 
We read, though, in the uh, 38th chapter of the 10th canto in the Krishna book about a devotee whose name was Akura. And what did Akura do? Akura came and took Krishna away from Vrindavan. So how can we say that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan? So we want to explore that a little bit. This is a seminar that I've given a few times. Usually I spend about four or five days in the seminar. Tonight we're going to try to pack it up in less than an hour. <laughs> and so we'll get some overview, some general understanding of it. But there's a lot more that could be said. There's four, uh, you may say five, different explanations. How it is that Krishna doesn't leave Vrindavan. And understanding this is very, very important for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Our movement is not just a movement where we recite some prayers, even prayers to Krishna and Vrindavan, but we should have some consciousness of why we're doing it. We should understand something about it. And therefore, we describe that there's a symbiosis, a kirtan kata symbiosis. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He said that just as Krishna is uh, a binatva nama namino, non different from his name, so also is Krishna Kata. And just as we don't separate Krishna from Radha, we shouldn't also separate Krishna from Krishna Kata. That Krishna Kata is like Srimati Radharani, according to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. We can do kirtan, but if there's no Krishna Kata, what will be the conception? of our kirtan. So we're going to speak about something which is a little high tonight. We're going to speak of some things about rasa. But it doesn't mean that we're qualified for this. It doesn't mean that we're sahajas either because we speak of these things. Srila Prabhupada is talking about these. It's important for us to have some conception. And this will help us in our nam bhajan. So we're just going to have a little overview of it. Four or five different explanations of this. So the first explanation is that Krishna doesn't leave Vrindavan, but it's Vasudev Krishna who leaves Vrindavan. In the 10th canto, chapter 3, text 47, uh, in his purport, Srila Prabhupada says, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur discusses that Krishna appeared simultaneously as a son of Devaki and as a son of Yashoda, along with the spiritual energy yoga maya. As a son of Devaki, he first appeared as Vishnu. And because Vasudeva was not in the position of pure affection for Krishna, Vasudeva worshipped his son as Lord Vishnu. Yashoda, however, pleased her son Krishna without understanding his Godhead. This is the difference between Krishna as a son of Yashoda and as a son of Devaki. This is explained by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur on the authority of Hari Vamsa. So Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he explains that there's two things. There's Krishna's Avirbhav and there's Krishna's Janma. And sometimes we say, Shiva Sri Dhamada Goswami, Avirbhav, Titi, Maha, Mahotsava, Ki, Jai. All glories to the appearance day of Shiva Sri Dhamada Goswami, or this Vaishnava, that Vaishnava. Avirbhav in that sense means appearance. But when we put these two next to each other, Avirbhav and Janma, there's a subtle but important difference. Krishna's Avirbhav is in the present of Kamsa, and there was no Janma. Rather, there was kind of a boom or a puff of smoke. I don't know what it was like in Hollywood or Bollywood. And suddenly, this forearm form of the Lord appeared there with a Shanka Chakra Gata Padma Club, club Sudarshan chakra and conch shell and lotus flower in his hands and a big metal crown on his head. I think it would have been very hard for David King to give birth to a baby with a crown on his head in a club in Sudarshan chakra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be a very, very scary kind of thing. <laughs> uh, the Hari Vangsa Purana, Prabhupada mentions in his purport, 
This is the Harivansa Purana, second canto, chapter four, text 11, describes Garba Kale to Sampurne, Ashtame Masite Strio, Devaki Cha Yashoda Cha, Susu Savate Samam Tada. The Devaki and Yashoda, Asampurne Ashtame, they gave birth at the same time, in the Ashtame, uh, during the eighth month of their pregnancy. This is Harivamsa Purana. But not exactly. In the prison of Kangsa was the Abhirbhava, the appearance of Lord Vishnu. But when Krishna appeared, the fifth chapter, the tenth canto, second verse describes, Jetta Karma Majasyavai, that Nanda Maharaj, he arranged for the Jetta Karma Sanskar. What is the Jetta Karma Sanskar? That's when the umbilical cord. From the baby to the mother is cut. That was done in Gokul on the order of Nanda Maharaj. There was a, an umbilical cord from baby Krishna to his mother. Now, unless that cord was really long and it went all the way across the Jamuna River to Mathura, it is definitely proof <laughs> that Krishna is the son of Yashoda. So, Samacharyas, they explain this concept that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan in this way. That Krishna is always in Vrindavan. And according to Jiva Goswami and his Gopal Champu, that after Vasudeva Krishna, the forearm Narayan feature of the Lord appeared, Avirbhav, in the prison of Kamsa, Vasudeva, on the order of the Lord, carried that baby across the Jamuna River in the midst of that terrible storm. He arrived in Gokul. Everyone was asleep. Even Yashoda was asleep. She gave birth to Krishna and she didn't even wake up. This is what our child is saying. It's an amazing birth. We've never heard of any mother. You, you didn't, you were awake when you gave, I think so. <laughs> it's kind of a difficult thing to sleep through. And by the potency of yoga maya, Vasudeva could not see that Yashoda had given birth to twins. Jiva Goswami says this. That he had given birth to Yoga Maya, Subhadra, and Nanda Nandan Krishna. So he was carrying this baby, who was actually Vasudeva Krishna. He put that baby down on the bed, and the baby entered into the body of Nanda Nandan Krishna. And throughout the Braj Leela, Vasudeva Krishna inside the body of Swayam Rupa Govinda, Nanda Nandan Krishna, the original form of the Lord, it was that Vasudeva expansion who was killing the demons. Because Krishna doesn't kill the demons. There's a couple of exceptions, Kaliya and, um, it's not coming to my mind. Oh, Shankachuda, Shankachuda and Kaliya. And that's another topic we're not gonna go there today. Uh, so, Vasudeva Krishna entered into the body of Krishna. And when Akura came to take Krishna away, they say it was that Vasudeva Krishna who left and went to Mathura and Dwarka and killed all the demons and did all that kind of stuff that he did. So this is our first explanation of how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. And this is a very important understanding for Gaudiya Vaishnavas. We don't think that Devaki and Yashoda are the same. When in the 82nd chapter of the 10th canto, in the meeting of Kurukshetra, when uh, Yashoda and the bridge Basi showed up at Kurukshetra and they went to see Krishna, Yashoda was in so much ecstasy. And at that time, Devaki came there. And Devaki began to speak to Yashoda in a way that women can be very expert at doing. Sweet on the outside like sugar, like a sugar-coated knife, but very sharp underneath. And David Kishi was telling Yashoda, oh, I just want to thank you so much for taking care of our son. Even though he wasn't actually your child, you were so kind to him, you took care of him for so long. And she was speaking like a little, mm, little bit of a knife there. But you know, David Kishi was defeated by Yashoda. Because Yashoda didn't even hear what Devaki had to say. She was just looking at the face of Krishna and just crying in ecstasy. <laughs> she was completely oblivious to any harsh words from Devaki. So Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we respect both Devaki and Yashoda. 
But we think of Krishna as Yashoda Nandan, as a son of Mother Yashoda. We think of him as a bridge basi. So that's the first answer. Hmm? That's Vasudev Krishna who left Brindavan. And Nandan Nanda and Krishna stayed behind. But then where did he stay? Okay, we're making an exploration of some of our Goya Vaishnava literature today. The second answer uh, comes in a purport we find in the 45th chapter of the 10th cantos, text number 25. The verse describes, It yuktasto parishradya nanda pranaya vivalaha purayan ashubir netre sahagopaya brajamya yo. So speaking about Nanda Maharaj leaving Mathura, because when Krishna left Vrindavan, Nanda Maharaj came with him in the cowherd boys. And it's a long, complicated discussion. We've been giving some classes about Krishna never uh, meeting a Kurukshetra Vakami. And that's an important part of it. I think we're in session number 76 or something like that. It's been a long topic. Anyway, so when Nanda Maharaj was leaving, Ityuktasto Parisvaja, that he, Parisvaja, he embraced Krishna and Balaram. Pranaya Vivala. He became overwhelmed with Pranaya. Vivala means overwhelmed. He became overwhelmed with affection for these two. And Ashubir Neti Saha, he began to cry, cry. And then he went back. Saha Gopai Bajam Yayo. Nanda Maharaj went back to Vrindavan. Jiva Goswami in Gopal he says that when Akura arrived in Vrindavan, he had a very difficult job to do. He had to try to convince Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda to allow Krishna and Balaram to leave Vrindavan. He spoke to Krishna, to Nanda Maharaj, all along. And Nanda Maharaj has a very soft heart. And Akura was telling him, he said, you know, your family members, your friends there in Mathura, every day, Kamsa is shouting at them. When he sees them, he thinks there's a conspiracy going on. He picks up his sword, he wants to kill them. And every day he starts shouting at Vasudev and Devaki, I'll kill you. Where is your eighth child? What happened? How did that child leave the prison? And he's threatening to kill all the members of the Yadu dynasty. And Akura said, the only reason I'm still there, I would have left. A lot of the Yadu dynasty members left. The only reason I'm still there is because I want to be there when Kongs is killed by Krishna. I want to see that. I'm waiting for that day. And although I'm acting as, as Kongs' servant, I'm on the good guy's team. I'm, I'm sympathetic with Krishna. So when Nanda Maharaj heard these words of Akura, he cried. He felt so terrible. How oh, Vasudev is suffering in such a way like this. And Akura was, was, was telling him only Krishna and Balaram. Only they can kill Kongsa. They've killed so many demons. Just for a little while, just for one day, maybe two days, you allow them to come and you bring them back. He spoke all night long to Nanda Maharaj. And finally, Nanda Maharaj, he agreed. He said, but we have to get permission from Krishna's mother. And he told Akura, you wait out here in the outside outer part of the house. And Nanda Maharaj went into the inner part of the house and he went to the room where every morning at that time, Mother Yashoda would be sitting with baby Krishna, with Krishna, not baby at that time, with Krishna on her lap. And Mother Yashoda embracing and loving her boy. But that morning, something strange was going on. Something was different. When Nanda Maharaj came in there, he found Yashoda was alone. And he didn't see Krishna anywhere. And Nanda Maharaj could understand that Yashoda had hidden Krishna somewhere. So Nanda Maharaj then had a hard sell. <laughs> you think it's difficult to sell books to businessmen in the airport or <laughs> something. So I wouldn't speak of trying to convince Mother Yashoda that Krishna should leave Bhagavad. And so Nanda Maharaj said so many things. Yashoda is a very simple lady. 
And she thought, Akura is a saintly person. And my husband's a very saintly person. And my husband's promising that he's going to bring Krishna back soon. I can't have any doubt of him. So she went and got Krishna. And she brought Krishna along with Nanda Maharaj. They stepped out of the house. When they came out of their house in Gokul, all the residents of Vrindavan were standing outside waiting because they'd heard this terrible news that Akura had come to take Krishna away. And then in front of all of them, Mother Yashoda took Krishna's hand and put Krishna's hand in the hand of Nanda Maharaj and said, this is my treasure. He's more valuable to me than my own life. You bring him back, you promise. And when Mother Yashoda spoke those words, it was like the sky cracked open, the stones broke. All the gopis in Vrindavan began to cry. And although those gopi ladies were very shy, those girls were very shy in expressing their feelings of love for Krishna, they became so overwhelmed with feelings that they forgot all about that. And they spoke up and they accused Mother Yashoda. They said, what kind of heartless person are you? You're putting your, your son, you're sending your son like a sacrificial animal to the altar of Kongsa to be killed? You heartless woman, and you're going to enter back into that house again? Better your house catches on fire. And Mother Yashoda, she turns Krishna over to Nanda Maharaj, and then she fainted on the ground unconscious. And Nanda Maharaj quickly picked her up. And Mother Yashoda looked at Krishna, and she began to cry. And she fainted again, and again, and again, and again. This went on. And Akura was saying, this is going to take a long time. <laughs> so he said, I think we should be going. And very quickly, he took Krishna and Bala. And many things happened. We don't want to discuss that so much. Krishna's leaving. But Krishna went to Mathura on the chariot of Akura. And he took bath in Akura Ghat, on the bank, on the bank of the Jamuna. And some Vaishnavas say that it was there that Swayam Rupa Govinda Krishna stayed in Vrindavan. And when Akura had that vision of Mahavishnu, of the Lord with four arms, and it was that feature of the Lord who came out of the river and got back on Akura's chariot and went to Mathura. So Nanda Maharaj and the boys, they'd gone a different route. Akura was going very fast because, and he was going in kind of a zigzag way so that no one could follow him. It's a long story. Nanda Maharaj and the Kauha boys, they arrived and they camped on the outside of Mathura because they're Gwalas, they're cowherd people. They don't have a business in the big city. And many things happened. Kuvaliyapati was killed. Chanur Mushtika was killed. Kangsa was killed. And Krishna, he arranged for the funeral ceremonies of Kangsa. He consoled the wives of Kangsa. And then the residents of Mathura, they got together and they called Krishna to come. And Krishna came to see them. He said, you for being so kind to me. Now I've got to go. I have to return to Vrindavan now. And he said, you can't do that. You belong to us. You're our son. You're the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. You don't, you're, you're the foster child, according to their conception, of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. You should stay here. And Krishna said, well, I, I killed Kongsa. So what more do you want? They said, but there's Sushupatavakra and so many other demons are there. And when they hear that Kongsa's dead, now they're going to want to attack because Kongsa, he married the two daughters. Uh, Asti and Prapti, the two daughters of Sishupal. And Sishupal, Asti and Prapti, of, uh, the two daughters of Jarasandha, excuse me. And Jarasandha is going to be very angry, and he's going to come and attack. So if, if you don't protect us, who's going to be to protect us? And he had so many ways to explain, but they wouldn't let him. So then he told Balaram, let's go talk to Bapa, Bapa's father, Nanda Maharaj. And Krishna went and explained it. He said, Father, they're saying that, that I'm not your son. 
that I'm the son of Vasudev, and that I that I, that I belong to them. And when Nanda Maharaj heard that, he said, "Do you believe that? Do you believe that you're the son of Vasudev?" Krishna said, "No, Father, you're my father. But what can I do? They're speaking like this. I don't know what to do." And then Nanda Maharaj, he told Krishna, he said, we'll stay here and this will become Vrindavan. Good solution. Krishna said, Papa, what about mother? If you don't return to mother, if I don't return and you also don't return, she'll die. You have to return, Father. Then Nanda Maharaj said, we'll, here. we'll bring residents of Vrindavan here. Krishna said, Father, we're gualas, we're cowherds. And had something, you know, quadrillions and quadrillions of cows. Every day, a few hundred trillion cows were being born in Braj. Krishna told his father, Father, how many parks are there in Mathura? If we bring all the cows to Mathura, where are they going to eat? So because of this consideration, Father, if you love me, you go back to Vrindavan and take care of the cows. This is one reason. Another reason Krishna didn't speak was that he was concerned that if I return to Vrindavan and Jarasandha and Sishupal and Dantabhakra and all these demoniac kings find out that I'm there, then they'll attack Vrindavan with their armies. And Vrindavan is not the place for millions of soldiers to come with, with, with elephants and, and have this huge battle. It'll spoil the whole mood of Vrindavan. Krishna's not afraid of them. Krishna can very easily defeat all those soldiers. But he doesn't want to disturb the mood of Vrindavan. So Krishna said, Father, you have to return. So this verse that we're just reading, 45th chapter, 10th canto, text 25. Nanda Maharaj became overwhelmed with affection hearing Krishna's words. His eyes were full of tears. He embraced Krishna and Balaram. And then he went back. Sahagopar Bajam Yayo. He went back to Vrindavan. Now, interesting thing. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur, in Saartha Darshan commentary, gives a very long commentary on this. And he says some very extraordinary things. This is our second answer of how it is that Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that when Nanda Maharaj was going back to Vrindavan, Krishna did a trick. And he manifested two forms of himself, two forms of Balaram. He manifested two forms of Nanda Maharaj and two forms of all the cowherd boys. And one form, Krishna remained in Mathura with Balaram. But in another form, Krishna got into the chariot with his father, Nanda. And along with the boys, he went to Vrindavan. But there was another chariot and another form of Nanda Maharaj, and another form of the boys who went back to Vrindavan without Krishna. And our Acharyas described that when Nanda Maharaj in that form arrived in Vrindavan, all the bridge bosses were having a party. They were, they were shouting and waving and, and jumping up and down and playing music as they could see the dust coming. Krishna's returning to Vrindavan, Hari Bol. And then the chariot comes. And Nanda Maharaj can't look at any of them. He's just holding his head down. And a very horrible realization comes to all the residents of Vrindavan that Krishna, he stayed in Mathura. But at the same time, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, and this purport, this is 10, 45, 25. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, Krishna came in another form, back to Vrindavan. Because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. And Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur explains this, that uh, there are two chambers in Vrindavan. There's a chamber of union and a chamber of separation. And he gives evidences to support that. He says that uh, just as uh, when Uddhava, when Uddhava arrived in Vrindavan, Uddhava, he, when he arrived there, the Bhagavatam says that everyone was very joyous. 
and he saw all the animals and, and, the, and the deer and everyone was dancing and full of so much joy. At that time, Uddhava had entered into the compartment of union. The chamber of Vrindavan, where Vrindavana Paritiga Padikam Nagatshati, Krishna never takes one step out of. And then he entered into the second chamber, the chamber of separation. And he saw that everyone was bitterly crying and crying in separation. This is the second answer. We have four main answers to our question today. How it is a Christian never lose Vrindavan? That's the second answer. I'm trying to be as brief as we can. The third answer is that Krishna found a secret place to hide in Vrindavan. And what was that place? Huh? My revered spiritual master, Sri Srimad Gorgavinda Maharaj, he explained this in a book that we printed called Embankment of Separation. And there's a chapter called The Fainting of Ramananda Roy. And I'm just going to give a very quick synopsis of this. In the Madhulila chapter 8, when Ramananda Roy met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the bank of the Godavari River in South India, some very amazing things happened. And Ramananda Roy, he saw Mahaprabhu manifest the form of Radha and Krishna. And then he saw Radha and Krishna becoming one as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami describes the reaction of Ramananda Roy. Deki Ramananda Horila Anande Muchite Dadite Na Pade Deha Parila Dimite Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Deki Ramananda Ananda Murchite. When Ramananda Roy saw that form, Ananda Murchite, in great ecstasy, Murchite, he fell to the ground unconscious. He fainted. So, our Guru explains that to understand this, why did Ramananda Roy faint? Ramananda Roy in Krishna Leela is Vishaka Saki. As Vishaka Saki, she's seen Radha and Krishna. As Ramananda Roy, he's seen Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what's so extraordinary about this vision that Ramananda Roy had? Why did he faint? So there's different types of separation. And Gaudiya Vaishnavas should understand that Srila Prabhupada says in one purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita that this separation, this is the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we should understand this mood of separation. Rupa Goswami, he describes four types of separation. Purva ragas tatamana, prema vaichitya midyapi, pravasas chetikatito, Vipralambas chatur vidaha. The vipralambas chatur vidaha. Vipralamba means separation. Chatur vidaha. There's four different types. The first type of separation is purvarag. And that's before Radha and Krishna have met. We have a perverted reflection of that in this world, where young girls, they fall in love with, with boys, with a, a movie star on the television screen or something. All oh, the these are idol or the boys fall in love with some girl singers. They've never met. So this is like the Purva Rag, is a perverted reflection of the Purva Rag that Radha and Krishna feel. Radharani hears someone playing the flute. She sees a picture that Chitrasaki made of Krishna. She hears the name Krishna. And she starts crying, and Rupa Goswami in, Uj in uh, Vidagda Madhav says that Radharani, she decided better that I commit suicide. And the gopis were horrified. Well, why are you speaking like that? She said, because I want to be a chaste lady, but I'm in love with three different men. That's terrible. Who are those three different men? Huh? The one is this picture that I see that Chitra Saki made. Sometimes a boy is such a, a cheeky boy. Sometimes he winks at me in that picture. Huh? The second is this boy whose name is Krishna. 
Just when I hear the name Krishna, I become so excited. And the third person is someone who plays a flute. And when I hear the sound of that flute, I go mad. When Lalita said, Are, hey, hmm, Saki, the three, it's the same person. It's okay. <laughs> it's all Krishna. So this is Purvara. Then there's Man. Man means loving sulkiness. When Krishna does something, he's supposed to meet Radharani, but he doesn't show up. And when he does show up, he's got some lipstick on his face from some other gopi or something. And Radharani says, that's, that's it. Probation shade. Entrance forbidden. Get out of here. There's two types of man. Hoitiki and ahoitiki. Hoitiki man means anger with a reason. Sometimes Krishna, he does something to raise the loving sulkiness of Radha because he likes to see that anger of Radha. And there's a reason. Other times, just Radharani, just, she's just angry for no reason. I like to say, I always comment on this, that God gave women the right to be angry for no reason. Any husband can, should appreciate this point. So that's Man. The third type of separation is called Prima Vaichitya. And this is something very important we'll discuss a little later. Prima Vaichitya is... Vaichitya, it's something which didn't really happen. It's when Radha and Krishna are together, but they're feeling separation. And a famous example is that Radharani once was sitting on the lap of Krishna, and, Madhu, and a bumblebee came buzzing around her face. Madhu Mangal, very bravely, he was there. He drove the bumblebee away, and proudly he exclaimed that Madhu Sudan is gone. Madhu Sudan means a bumblebee who likes Madhu, the honey. But Madhu Sudan is also a name for Krishna. And when Radharani heard the words, Madhusudan is gone, she began to cry, feeling separation. She's sitting on Krishna's lap. And Krishna's thinking, this is, so, this is Prema Vaichitya. It's extraordinary. The third type of separation is Prabhas. And Prabhas is when there's some actual separation. It's two types of Prabhas, Dura Prabhas and Sudura Prabhas. Dura Prabhas is when Krishna goes to Kamyavan or Bilvavan, or one of the different forests, and the gopis can't see him for three or four hours. But Sudur Prabhas. Sudur Prabhas is also known as Mathura or Dwarka Prabhas, and it's when Krishna leaves Vrindavan, and he goes to Mathura or Dwarka, and the gopis don't know if they'll ever see him again or not. That's Sudur Prabhas. So there's three uh, levels of Sudur Prabhas. <laughs> it's, it's a technical thing. We should understand something about it. And our Guru Maharaj speaks of this in, in Bankman's separation. is Bhavi, Bhuta, and Bhava. So Bhavi is separation which hasn't happened yet. The gopis in Vrindavan, they've heard, did you hear the news? This fellow occurs, has come. He's going to take Krishna away. Krishna hasn't left yet. But already they're feeling separation. Just like devotees sometimes. When they hear Gurudev is leaving, he's going to America or something. I don't know when I'm going to see him. Even before he leaves, you're feeling separation. The wife feels separation from the husband even before he leaves when he's going to go on a long journey. This is called Bhavi Viraha, or separation which is uh, taking place in the future. Bhuta Viraha is separation which has already taken place. Krishna's left Vrindavan. And the gopis are crying in separation. That's Bhuta Viraha. But the third type of Viraha is Bhavan Viraha. Bhavan Viraha is in the act of happening. When a Kur is taking Krishna away from Vrindavan, and the gopis are there, and they're crying and crying, that's uh, Bhavan Viraha. So there's also three aspects a samridhi man sambhog, samridhi man sambhog. Samridhi man means fully enriched. Sambhog means union. Samridhi man sambhog takes place after Sudura Prabhas. Okay, after Krishna's been gone from Vrindavan to Mathura or Dwarka. It's a little technical, but it's important. Rupa Goswami gives you things. So just as there's three types of separation of Sudura, of, uh, Sudura Prabhas, there's also three aspects of Samridhi Man Sambhog. And those are, again, Bhavi, Bhutta, yeah, and Bhavan. Yeah. Bhavi in Niruvan Forest, Radha and Krishna have met. This is Bhavi Milan. But they haven't talked yet. They haven't yet come together. That's Bhavi Milan. Yeah. It's 
It's coming. It's coming up in the future. And there's some excitement that we're going to come together. Bhuta Milan is there also. Bhuta Milan means when Radha and Krishna had become one in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. When Radha and Krishna become one, it's Guranga Mahaprabhu. That's Bhuta Milan. So Ramananda Roy, he's already seen Bhavi Milan as Vishaka Saki. He's seen Radha and Krishna meeting together. He's seen Bhuta Milan uh, after when Radha and Krishna combine together in one body's Guranga. But there's something he hasn't seen before. And that's Bhavan Milan. When Radha and Krishna in the act of union, when they're coming together, and this is why Ramananda Roy fainted. So Krishna had this desire. He wanted to get the bhav of Radharani. Shri Radhaya Pranaya Mahi Makidhi Sovanayai Vasudyo Yene Bhuta Baduri Makidhi Sovama Diya Sokyam Chasya Mani the Bhava the Kiddi Sambati Yodoha to Bhava just Samajani Satchi Garba Sindhu Harindu. Sixth verse of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Describes the three different reasons, internal reasons, why Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wanted to understand the mood of Radha. What is her love? But when Krishna approached Radha, if, if, if somebody has something that you want, then what do you do? You approach them and say, could I please have some of this? You approach into the lake and say, could I have some prasada from Maharaj, please? She has something. You approach ask her for that. Now, if she doesn't want to give it to you, then what do you do? And then you say, well, I'll tell you what, 500 rupees, 1,000 rupees, right? You, you, try to, to, you try to pay something for it, right? But then what do you do if she won't take any money also? You ask her for a gift. You, you try to give money. Then maybe you say, look, I'll be your servant. I'll come. I'll clean your house every day. I'll clean your baths. I'll wash your dishes. I'll do it. You just give me some of this prasad. And she says, no. Then what do you do? So Krishna went through all these things. He approached Radharani. Please, Radhe, please give me your bhav. Radharani said, what do you want with the feelings of this miserable creature? So Krishna, he tried to get a job. He tried to serve Radharani in his many pastimes. Krishna dresses sometimes up like a gopi, goes to serve Shmati Radharani because he wants her bhav. When Radharani finds out who it is, hey, Get out from here. You can't serve me. Shut up. So Krishna tried to beg for me. He tried to serve for him. But he still can't do it. So there's only one recourse left. If Indulika won't let you have that prasad, you have to break into her house and you steal it. Right? And Krishna, he's known as Chodadraganya. He's a great thief. And we celebrate that during the month of Kartik. And Rupa Goswami is Dvitiya Chaitanya Ashtakam. He's described Kutuki Rasastomam Ritva. The Krishna, he entered into the heart of Radharani to steal that love of Radha. So the first question comes, how did he enter into the heart of Radha? And our grandmas give some example <coughs> that the heart of Shimati Radharani is just like wax. And in the, in the uh, Majulila chapter eight, Srila Ramananda Roy, he tells Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gives a beautiful verse, that Jatuni means shalak. He says that, that my dear Lord, Radha and Krishna, you and Radha, you've merged together. Just shalak, it melts when there's heat. So also the heart of Radha melts when there's heat. And what is the heat that make Radharani's heart melt? It's Vipralamba Agni, or the fire of separation. And when Krishna left Vrindavan, Radharani began to cry and cry. And Krishna entered into the heart of Radha. And our Guru Maharaj gives a beautiful example that just like the Champak flower, have you ever seen a champak flower blossom? Champak flower blossoms at night. And no one sees how the champak flower blossoms. But we see the moon 
and under the, the moon, the chumpuk flower begins to blossom. No one sees how the moon opens up the petals of the chumpuk flower. But little by little, the moon rays go into that uh, flower and open them up. So similarly, this is Bhava Milan. And Roy Ramananda, he hadn't seen this thing before. This is why he fainted. Roy Ramananda, he saw how Shama Sasadar, how Krishna, who just like a moon, was opening with his soft hand, petal after petal, of the Champak Varni Radha, the heart of Radha, which is just like a Champak flower. And so this is our third explanation <laughs> of how it is that uh, Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Where does he go? He enters into the heart of Srimati Radharani. And when he enters into the heart of Radha, something happens. When he comes out of the heart of Radha, Shama Sundar Krishna finds that he's become Gora Sundar. He's become Garanga Mahaprabhu. And the Ras Lila, which is going on at Bhangsivat, and the Kirtan with the gopis on the bank of the Jamuna is gone. And now he sees the Ganga. And he sees so many men doing Kirtan together. And Krishna Lila has become Gora Lila. When he enters into the heart of Radha, he comes out in that way. So that's our third answer. Because Krishna is a great thief. Rupa Goswami, excuse me, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, he's described what a thief Krishna is. Gokulai Gokulam Ninye, Gokulam Gokulai Haran, Gokulam Gokula Strinam, Gokulai Gokulai Haran. Such a very beautiful poetic verse. Hmm? That the Lord of Gokul, Gokulai, Gokulam drove his cows, Gokulam means to drive the cows, as he entered Gokul, stealing the senses. Gokul means to steal the senses of the young girls of Gokul and the eyes of the people of Gokul. So this is our third answer, how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He enters into the heart of Radharani to steal her love. There's a fourth answer. Some Vaishnavas say that Krishna is still there in Vrindavan today. He's just hiding in the bushes somewhere and watching the gopis to see what they're going to do. Our fifth answer is our final answer we're going to offer. It's a very elevated topic. It's something that I heard my Gurma speak about. And to understand this, we have to Rupa Goswami's, what I consider to be his crest jewel of all of his literature. And that's the Lalita Madhav. In the third, in the second act of Lalita Madhav, Krishna leaves Vrindavan. Now remember that. The first thing that we read, we were reading from Chaitanya Chaitanya, the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Rupa Goswami, don't take Krishna out of Vrindavan. Rupa Goswami wrote this drama. Mahaprabhu was speaking to him about that drama and how to write it. And Rupa Goswami wrote this drama in the second act, he says Krishna left Vrindavan with a crow. So Rupa Goswami disobeyed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But our Guru she said no. He explained that we, there's two ways to understand things. One is called apara vichar, or the apparent consideration. The second is tattva vichar, or the absolute consideration. From the apparent consideration, it seems that Rupa Goswami disobeyed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by writing it like this in the Lita Mata drama. But if we analyze that drama, we'll find our fourth or fifth answer to this question, how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. And we'll find that actually Rupa Goswami never disobeyed Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Rather, Sri Chaitanya Manobhishta Stapitami in the Buddha. He understands the heart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he establishes that heart here in this world. So, in the third act of Alita Madhav, Rupa Goswami describes something which is so outrageous that. Whenever we mention this even devotees, they, they become so horrified. How can someone write about this? He hmm? says that Srimati Radharani, in separation from Krishna, entered into the waters of the Jumuna and drowned herself. And at that time, Lalita Saki called up, Hadi Hadi, Hadambi Hadambi, 
Alas, alas, I'm slain. Na una hada utida. Na una adi utida. Radharani's gone. She's never going to rise again. These are the words of Alita Saki. So, what a horrible thing. Whenever there's a romance, even if you look at a mundane romance of Romeo and Juliet, there's some tragedy there. There's separation there. That separation enhances the union, even in a mundane romance like Romeo and Juliet. So this is the greatest separation. What can be greater? Radha, Krishna's left Vrindavan, and now Radharani has committed suicide, and therefore Lalita is saying, that, una hada utida, that never to rise again. In other words, Radha and Krishna are not going to come together again. Everything's finished. So if Radharani is drowned in the Kalindi River, and Rupa Goswami describes it, Vishaka also into the river water, then how is there going to be union with Krishna? So after Radha and Vishaka drowned in the Kalindi, Kalindi Devi took Radharani and handed her over to her father, Surya Dev. Surya Dev is a sun god. And Surya Dev has a dear devotee whose name is Satrajit. Daughter, Satyabama. And Radharani entered into Satyabama and Dwarka. And Rupa Goswami, in his Lalita Madhav, he says that generally we understand that the Mahishis or the queens in Dwarka are expansions of the Braj Gopis. But now, in this case, they've, become, they've manifested different forms which are identical. We may get a big headache from this. Jiva Goswami comments on this elaborately in some of his Bhagavatam purports, explaining this Lalita Madhav. He said, this is not the same. He says, in different Dipya Yugas, the same pastimes happen in little different ways. And that what happened in the Bhagavatam is a different Dipya Yuga than this, what happened in Lalita Madhav. So both can be accepted. So Radha entered into Satyabhama. And uh, Radharani gave this uh, jewel that she'd gotten from Shankachuda, which Krishna took from the head of Shankachuda. Radharani gave that to Surya Dev, like a flower, because Radharani does Surya Puja every day. And then Surya Dev gave that jewel to Satyajit, who became known as the Shaman Taka Jewel. So it's a very long, amazing story. Radharani was there. In Vrindavan, Krishna was there, in, in, in Dwarka, excuse me. And Krishna ended up marrying Rukmini, who, had be, who was actually Chandravali. Krishna ends up marrying Chandravali with a condition about Maharaj Bhishmaka, the father of, of Rukmini. He says, we'll let you marry our daughter, but you must take off not any other girls. She's, he's telling that to Krishna. And Krishna's thinking to himself, he recognized Chandravali. It's a long, complicated story, but Chandravali became Rukmini. And he thought, well, at least I have Chandravali. She reminds me of Radharani. And Radharani did suicide. Krishna saw something on the news or something, I don't know, but that he heard some word. Radharani's committed suicide. There's no hope. So, yes, okay. So now Krishna's under the control of Chandravali. And a few days later, Brita Devi, the mother of Satrajit, shows up at the house of Rukmini, the palace, the beautiful in such a bomb. And as uh, Chandravali, Rukmini, that girl, that this is trouble. This girl is trouble. <laughs> she is so beautiful. And the beauty of Radharani, of course, is not just in her, her eyes, but it's her, her love, station of Krishna. And Chandravali, Rukmini thought, what can I do to keep this woman away from my husband, from Krishna? And so his mother brought her there. So here, son wanted to donate this girl to the king of Dwarka. And such a Radha was looking very depressed. And Chandravali Rukmini asked her, why are you looking so unhappy? And Radha such a said, I'll tell you something, you're a girl, you can understand. I'm in love with another man. And I don't want anything to do with this Dwarkadish fellow. 
She doesn't understand that it's actually Krishna. And when Chandravali Rukmini heard that, she said, oh, I think I can help you with that. <laughs> very, very good. She wanted to keep her away from Krishna. Previously, Krishna in Dwarka was feeling so much separation from Vrindavan that he called for Vishvakarma and had Vishvakarma create another Vrindavan garden. And in that garden, he, it was just like Vrindavan. He made a deity of Krishna. And Krishna would go every day to that garden. He would tell Rukmini that, oh, I have to go to the office today. I've got some work to do, some demons to kill, whatever things. I have to rescue some devotees. But Krishna would go to that Nava Vrindavan garden. And Rupa Goswami says that he the son of Sandapani Muni, who Rupa Goswami says is actually Madhu Mangal. He went there with Madhu Mangal because Madhu Mangal understands Braj and they spent time there together. So Chandravali Rukmini didn't understand that Krishna was going to that garden every day. And so she told the Satyabhama, Radha, that I know where you can stay and you, there won't be any men who go there. You won't be bothered. You can go stay in this Nava Vrindavan garden. So, uh, one day, Krishna had gone there, and Krishna saw astonished. He said, what a, what a beautiful deity, it's just like me. And I, I, this is amazing. Huh? Later, Radharani saw that deity, and she began to worship that deity. And Krishna, again coming to Vrindavan, that never Vrindavan, but not seeing Radha, he saw that deity and said, hey, Madhu, Madhu Mangal, look at this. Someone's been worshipping this deity with great love. You see, the tilak is crooked. Their hands were shaking when they put the tilak on. The, the chandan is all running down the face of the deity because they were crying when they put the chandan on. And he said, hey, Madhu, listen, someone's coming. Madhu, quick. Hide the deity in the bushes. And so Madhu Mango, who's very strong, took the deity and put the deity in the bushes. And then Krishna stood there like the deity. And Radharani, she came there and she saw that deity. She was with her friend, Navabrinda Devi. She says, So young Jivita Bandhu, Indu Vadane Bhuya Samasadita. Now, Again, I've gotten the beloved Lord of my heart. And she was decorating and worshiping that deity in so many different ways. Huh? So, uh, but uh, she said, this is my Lord. And Navarinda Devi said, no, no, this is just a deity. But Radharani was so amazed. And when Krishna, he's standing there acting like a deity, he's looking and Krishna said, Hanta, Hanta, Katam Sadeyam, Me Prana Vallabha Radha. Huh? This is, this, this is my Prana Vallabha Radha. Hmm? Krishna knew that Radharani had given up her body and drowned herself in the Jamuna. She was no longer in this world. But he's thinking, how is this? This must be some kind of like, I don't know, they make these, these uh, holograms or something like in Disney World. Vishwakarma is really, really expert. <laughs> and he made some kind of like robot. Looks just like Radha. And Krishna spoke like that. Hanta, hanta, katam, sabayam. Uh, me pranavalaba Radha. This is my pranavalaba Radha. Huh? And when Radharani heard that, she said, oh, this is an amazing deity. The deity talks. <laughs> and she said, ayi, padimbe. Padimbe means a reflection or deity. Huh? She said, huh? is everything okay with Padma Lochan, Krishna? Is everything all right with Krishna? That's all that Radharani cares about. And when Krishna heard her, Krishna said, Ayi Maya Yantra Mayi Radhike. Huh? My dear Maya Yantra, illusory robot machine, something of Radha, illusion of Radha created by some magical spells. He said, Krishna's okay now. Because you've come here. Radharani's no more. But you're just like Radha. Huh? Mm -hmm. He says, Satyamidanam eva Krishna hakshemi. Yadiyam saiva mudrayatam lokataram anukurvati tvam 
Ayak Shemun Prichtasi. He said, Krishna is very happy because you look just like Radha and you're asking about his welfare. And then Radharani, she became very shy. She took her cloth, hid her face, and she turned to her Saki, Navabindadev. She said, Saki, Padimavi, Adam Kim Pur Maduram, Baharidi. What a wonderful deity Vishvakarma made. This deity is speaking in such a sweet way. Krishna was thinking inside of his heart, Aho Gandharva, Purna Kainopi, Maya Gandharva, Natyashaka, Pichita, Chamatkara Karita. This magical mirage of Radha, it's Chamatkar, it's, it's a very amazing thing. Vishwakarma is so expert. He created this amazing number, Vrindavan. It really looks like Vrindavan, and this really looks like Radha. At that time, such a Bamarup Radha, she began to cry in a piteous voice, and she said, Ai Krishna Padime, O deity of Krishna, Hadurbhagani. I'm very, very unfortunate. O deity, I'm begging some alms from you. Ai kana padime esha chadu kadihim bikedi. This is my bikedi. I'm, I'm begging these alms from you, O oh dear deity. Rahi evam che jangami bhavi achiram suhavehi santaba jajaram dina elo anam. So please, I want one thing. My dear deity, could you become a living, moving person. <laughs> this is the prayer of Srimati Radharani. Krishna began to cry. And there was union. This is Prema Vachicha. Remember we are speaking about Prema Vachicha when the lover and the beloved are together, but they're feeling separation. Radha and Krishna are together. Radharani is thinking that Krishna is a, a, is a deity. Krishna is thinking Radharani is some kind of magical mirage, a robot. It's Prema Vachicha. This is Sambo, Union, in Never Bindavan. And so the story goes on, so many different things. In the Dasani Anka, in the 10th act of uh, Lalita Mata, Rupa Goswami again describes Union. All the inhabitants of Braj Bhumi were united in Dwarka, and at that time, Krishna turned to Radha and he said, Praneshwari Radhe Pratayashva Kim Attaparam Priya Karavani. Hey, Radhe. What can I do to please you? And Srimati Radharani at that time she replied, Yate Lila Pada Pari Malagari Vanya Parita Danyakshoni Vila Sati Brita Maturi Maduri Bihi Tatrasma Bis Chatula Pasupi Bhava Mudgantara Bihi Samvitam tvam kalaya vadano lasi vina viraham. Hey, hey Krishna, you're Murari, you, you're the player of the flute. You give us this benediction that in the land of Mathura, Brajbhumi, Rupa Goswami wrote a book called Mathura, uh, what is it? Mathura something, speaking about Braj, because the greater area is known as Mathura. She said there in that place, there's so many forests and so many gopis and so many things. You please, uh, you enjoy pastimes with this. This is my prayer. Please come back to Vrindavan. That Vrindavan is there where you play during your Kaishor Leela. The jungle is there. The Kunjas are there, the peacocks are there, the Jamuna River is there, Giddy Govardhan is there, the cows are there, the deer are there, all the gopis and people are there, everyone is there, everyone is waiting for you. Please come to Vrindavan and play your flute again. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami describes the words of Srimati Radharani. Tomara Charana Mora Braja Kodakare. Udaya kore jari tabe manche kore Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Toma Come to our home in Vrindavan And tabe kore desires fulfilled 
This is a prayer of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the end of Rathi Atra. So Radharani, she said, please come back to Vrindavan. Put your lotus feet there. This is my prayer. And Krishna said, create the tastu. Let it be granted. Radharani said, Kadambia, how is it possible? You're here. Shri Krishna studied. Then Krishna didn't say anything. He just looked in a southerly direction as if he were waiting for someone. And at that time, Rupa Goswami says, Pravishaya Gargya Saha Shepanaikanangsa. At that time, Gargamuni's daughter, his name is Ekanangsa, she came there. And she told Radha, Saki Radhe, Mata Sangsayam Kitaha. Don't have any sangsai, don't have any doubt. Yato Bhavatya, right now. Srimad Gokuleta Traiva Vartante. You're now you're in Vrindavan. Kintu Mayaiva Kala, Shepartam Anyata Prapanchita. Ah, I did some tricks, some prapanchika. I made some, some illusory thing. But actually, you never left Vrindavan. Vrindavan right now, you never left. I did all this just to create something wonderful. Krishna is still in Vrindavan. He never left. So, this is our fourth understanding, how Krishna never left Vrindavan. And that's a very, very esoteric topic. We draw some connection with that with Jagannath Puri. And I won't go into that. That's a very long postgraduate discussion, how the connection is there with Jagannath Puri. But there's a connection with Gora Lila. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur once describing some of the most important things for the Gaudiya Vaishnava. Our supreme occupation is to serve the residents of Braj who are afflicted by separation from Krishna. This is our occupation. We can't enter into that. We can't understand that. That's so infinitely high, so far, far beyond us. But that is Gauravila. Uh, so there's four different answers, or five if you count the bushes answer that uh, Krishna actually never leaves Vrindavan, but it's the velocity of expansion he leaves. That's one answer. A second answer that uh, is there. Just, just pretend that you're hearing from someone in Sri Lanka, or pretend you're hearing from someone in India. But we're realizing what we went over today. Five different explanations of how it is that Krishna nowadays is Vrindavan. The first is that Nanda Nanda Krishna, Swami Rupavinda, is always in Vrindavan. It's Vasudev Krishna, his foreign feature, who kills the demons, who entered into the body of Nanda Nanda Krishna, and Vasudev brought him there. And when Vakura comes, it's that Vasudev Krishna who leaves. The second answer is that there's two chambers in Vrindavan. This is the answer of Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur in the 25th chapter of the uh, 10th canto. 
and that Krishna returned to Braj with Nanda Maharaj. And there's two chambers, one of union and one of separation. The third answer is that Krishna entered into the heart of Radha and he became Guranda Mahaprabhu. Fourth answer, some Vaishnavas say that Krishna's hiding in the bushes. The fifth answer is in the story of Alita Madhav. Just to finish that, I'd like to turn now to a book called Narottam Vilas, the third chapter. Uh, this is a book written by Narahari Chakravarti Thakur about the great devotee, Narottam Das Thakur. And he describes how Narottam never had the good fortune to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu during his manifest pastimes. And after Mahaprabhu's disappearance, Narottam decided to go to Navadweep to come to Mayapur to see the birth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and meet the last remaining associates of Mahaprabhu. So as Nautam would set out to come to Mayapur, just on the way he began crying and crying, and everybody who saw him, they fell in love with him. So many different villages, their hearts would melt. Who is this beautiful boy who's just crying and crying? It moves our hearts so much. And everybody began to follow him. Finally, he came to the outskirts of Mayapur Dam. And when he arrived in the outskirts of Mayapur, Nautam began to cry. Doya Maya Prabhu took a bunja ite, Ehina Shamoy Jamaite, Kutukite, Dekite, a pilot, Nadia Bihar, Tatakaite, Treva, He, Ashuda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. He said, Oh, hey, Doya Moya Prabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you're so kind and merciful. Dukkha Bunjaiti, why am I having to suffer like this? Oh, hey, Nisamoy Janmaiti, why have I taken birth at this time? Dekiti Napailun, I couldn't see a Nadia Bihar, your pastimes. In Mayapur Dam, Tahakaite Niti Bahi Ashudar. And he began to cry and cry. Hmm? But, Dire Dire Chare Duke, Krandana Korea, Dekaye as charge in Abba Dweepe Pravishia, Pratigade Gade Kiva, Ananda Mangala, Niranta Hari Hari Dwana, Kulahala. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Dire Dire Chale Duke Krandana Koriya. Like this, Krandana Koriya crying and crying. Dire Dire Chale Duke, full of lamentation, little by little, slowly. Narutam Das Thakur entered Nabadweep. But Dekiye, a charge, a charge in Nabadweep Pavishi. When he entered Nabadweep, he saw something amazing. Pratigari Gari Kibi Ananda Mangala. Every house, everybody was completely ecstatic. Niranta Hari Hari Dwani Kolahala. Everybody was chanting Hare Krishna everywhere. Kinari Purusha Mahamani Lashe. Chatur Dike Hoite Chale Prabhudar Adlashe. Parikara Saha Biharai Gora Roy Shankirtana Shukera Patara Nagayai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Kinari Purusha Mahamana Ulash everywhere he saw all the men and the women, everybody was completely ecstatic. Chaduriki Hoite Chali Prabhupada Abhasa. In all directions, everybody was completely dancing in ecstasy. Parikara Sahab Bihara Guruai. He saw all the associates of Mahaprabhu. Sankirtana Shukta Nadia. Everybody was doing kirtan in Mayapurnabadweep in great ecstasy. And Narutam was just looking at this. And then Nautam Vilas says, something happened. And all that changed. And it was gone. And then he saw everybody just sitting and crying and banging their heads against the walls and rolling on the ground and crying and crying. And Nautam, he started crying. What have I seen? And then he thinking to himself, then he saw and I said, hey, do you know, where can I find that? 
And when he heard that question, he began to cry and cry. He, said, he couldn't even speak. He just pointed. You go that way. And Narottam went there. And when he saw Mahabhu's house, he began to cry. So it's a long explanation. But very interesting point. Narottam Das Thakur, when he first entered into Mayapur Navadweep Dham, he entered into the chamber of union. And he saw that, that Gora Leela was going on even right now. Then he went a little further into the chamber of separation. Because this Gora Leela is Krishna Leela. It's Krishna Leela is Gora Leela. Gora Leela is a, is a paricheta or an appendix of Krishna Leela, and we can't separate the two. So many, many things can be said about all these topics. This is just kind of a little bit of an overview, and there's some kind of road signs an acute listener, an astute listener who may pick up on directions that you can go in to go further in understanding this. Or perhaps you might come to Jagannath Puri sometime. It's usually we speak of, we take. So I want to stop there. If anybody has any reflections, comments, questions, this is a good time for it. We have a few devotees here in the room with us. Anybody have any, anything? It makes sense. Can you die? Do you have a stomach ache? <laughs> we were kind of running very, very fast. I'm sorry. We had four or five different explanations. Siddhartha Kumar says, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, my question is in relation with two sessions back. Why did Lord Chaitanya go to Alanath during Anabhasra? As Lord Tota Gopinath was anyways there in Jagannath Puri. So we explained that, that uh, Lord Alanath, he's a forearm deity of Lord Narayan. Mahaprabhu said that it's an offense for one of his followers to worship the form of Lord Narayan. He was going to reject Mukunda for that. So then why did he go to the deity of Alanath? So we explained, according to the explanation of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, that Jagannath Puri is Vipralamba Ketra, the place of separation. And Alanath Brahmagiri is Dvigunita Vipralamba Ketra, the place of twice as much separation. And it's that, that place is non different from a place known as Paita. Paita is a place in Braj, not so far from Chandrasarovar. Chandrasarovar is a place where Krishna performs the Ras Lila. And on one occasion, according to the Ujjalila Mani, and according to Bhakti Ratnakar and Chaitanya Charitamrita and other literatures, Krishna decided to play a trick on the gopis. And so he disappeared from the Ras Lila. And the gopis went looking for him. And then Krishna manifested a forearm form in the bushes. And the gopis saw him from a distance. Said, there, it's the son of Nanda Maharaj. And he went running there. And as he came close, he said, oh, it's not Krishna. It's just God. And they said, Dandavat's Narayana. Where is Krishna? Hmm? That's what you do with Narayana. You offer obeisances and prayers. The gopis offered prayers. Where is Krishna? And he was very mysterious. He didn't say anything. And then Radharani came, and Krishna thought, this is really a good game. I'm going to do the same thing to Radharani. Mm -hmm. But J. Rupa Chinti does say Rupa Hoy. Vrindavan Das Thakur says that the nature of a devotee's love is that the Lord reciprocates with that love, and he manifests a corresponding form according to that love. So when Radharani came before that forearm, the Ryan form of Krishna, two of those arms disappeared, and he became Dwibuj Murlidhar. Krishna playing the flute. So this happened at Alanath. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he came before Alanath, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said two of those arms disappeared and he became Gopinath. So he went there during that Anabhasya period for different reasons, uh, internal, external reasons. One external reason is because he couldn't have Darshan of Lord Alanath, but he could go to Tota Gopinath, as Prabhuji is mentioning. But going to, he went to Alanath because Alanath is not different from Jagannath. When Lord Brahma came to install the deity of Jagannath, he first did meditation at Sintapasya, and uh, the Lord appeared before him. And that place became known as Brahmagiri, or the hill of Lord Brahma. And he manifested the deity of Alanath before Lord Brahma. So that deity of Alanath is considered to be non-different from Jagannath. 
and is a deity of separation. He's a deity of paita. It's a very big subject. I hope the Buddha's can understand something about that. It's a very esoteric thing. Okay, anybody else with any reflections or comments or anything? Okay, it's someone in Georgia, yo. Olenek said, when the devotee, when can the devotee see the real Dom? The physical body is transformed into spiritual, and spiritual eyes are manifest. Well, there's three ways to see the Dom. We, we see with our stula deha body, with our, our physical body, we see something, but we see there's bad smells. And, and, and we see maybe there's politics going on and a lot of noise and they're playing some Bollywood music and it's really obnoxious. We see that. But a second way to see the Dham is Shutekshita Pata. Shutekshita Pata means that we see with the ears. And Prabhupada said we should see Vrindavan with our ears. So we hear from Sadhu Guru, we hear from Shastra. And that hearing, Shutekshita Pata, that's the path of seeing with the ear. And then the third way that we see, you may actually see that, that Dibya Dham, the Dibya Drishti, you may have the divine vision. Just like Man Singh, one uh, king in, in Rajasthan once came to Sanatana Goswami. And with a little bit of pride, service to Sanatana Goswami, he said, so much, what do you want? I can do anything you want. And Sanatana Goswami seeing his pride, he said, well, you see that, that brick over there? It's broke. Could you fix that one brick? This is a case you got. And Man Singh, I think, well, he wants me to fix one brick. I, I, I've got enough to, to, to pay the streets in gold. And he went there and looked at that brick. And then he had some Dibya Darshan. He could see the actual dawn by the mercy of Sanatana Goswami. He saw that one brick was made out of the most fabulous gems. Those gems were so valuable that in his entire treasury, he didn't have enough wealth to repay, re repair that one brick. So he became very humbled by that. So there's these three darshans that we have of the Dham. We don't want to imagine and speculate something like the Sahajas imitate something. We don't try to imitate that Dibya darshan. We should try to cultivate the Shutekshita Pata, the pathway of seeing through the ear by hearing from Sadhu Guru. So I hope that's helpful. If there's anything else, Okay, Shamru Paribo, Shamru Prabhu in Boston. One of the understandings of Krishna's appearing to leave Vrindavan is that there are two chambers, one of union, the other separation. Does that mean in Golok? Huh? There, and I, that's all I see is truncated your comment. That, that in Golok there are such. I, yes, according to my Guru Maharaj, he said that Gorilila is that chamber of separation. And therefore, that Gorilila is also Vrindavan. And that, that uh, Vrindavan is going on today. And this is actually another answer that we could give how Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Krishna promised in his message that he gave through Uddhava to the Braj Gopikas. He says, Bhavati nam viyogo me nahi sarvatmana pachit. That you're never actually separated from me. And I'm always with you. So Jiva Goswami comments on this verse in Gopal Champu. He says that in the Prakat pastimes, or the manifest pastimes, the residents who are taking part in those manifest pastimes are not aware that Krishna's there. They think Krishna left. Krishna went to Mathura Dwarka. So if sometimes Krishna might secretly appear in Braj, that wouldn't create faith in that. When he does appear sometimes, they think it's just some spurti, it's just some dream or something. They don't actually take it for real. Uh, and it would create some disturbance in their bhav. So Krishna hides in that way. And Srila uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that, that if Krishna really loves the Braj Gopikas, if Aradya Bhagavan Brajay Satana Yastadama Vrindavan and Ramya Kachiri Pasana Braja Vidu Vargena Bhakalpita, if really the topmost devotees are the Braj Gopis, how can he say that? If they're really the topmost devotees, why did he leave them and make them suffer? And in the same verse that we were reading from Vishnu's commentary in the 25th chapter of the 10th canto, he explains that just as uh, a goldsmith, to show the purity of gold, he applies heat to the gold and melts the gold. And then you can see if there's some different alloys or something in it. 
So he said in a similar way, to show the purity of the Braj Gopi's love for him, he melted their hearts with the fire of separation. And that was Krishna's purpose. So as far as I can see, Shamru Prabhu's comment, question, which got cut off. Oh, here it is right here. Shamrup's also writing to me. <laughs> he wrote a separate comment, it's not something else. Okay, here he says, uh, does that mean that, that uh, there's two chambers in Goloka Vrindavan? Yes, that this is according to my Guru Maharaj, which makes sense because Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that uh, one chamber of Vrindavan is Gora Lila, and Gora Lila means separation. So just as we were, we were reading from uh, Narottam Vilas and Narottam Das Thakur entered into Mayapur and Navadweep, into the chamber of union, and then entered into the chamber of separation. There's two chambers here in Navadweep is also in Goloka Vrindavan. Okay. And do like a, you have some question. So it's difficult to understand that uh, uh, why Krishna appeared uh, in the earth was uh, in four arms. Because many people consider the um, Vaikuntha Lord. Yeah, the four arms are better, they think yeah, four arms are better like than two. <laughs> so this is why like Krishna is giving them opportunity to say, yes, I'm the original. And then second, in the same context, uh, that uh, uh, Vasudev and Devaki, they were doing so many, so much tapasya to get the Lord as the Son. But when he appeared in four arms, they didn't feel that they are our Son. They wanted to have a Son, but he appeared as the Lord. So where is that uh, fulfillment of the deviction to get the Son as the Lord? First of all, even Srila Prabhupada in Krishna book, Prabhupada doesn't say anything about Krishna being directly the son of Yashoda. He says that Krishna is the son of Devaki in Vasudeva. But in his purport in the second chapter of the 10th canto, he quotes Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and he gives us this esoteric thing. Now why, we may ask the question, why did Srila Prabhupada do that? Why didn't he just say that Krishna is the son of Yashoda? It's something confidential. And most people, they think four arms are better than two. <laughs> you can play Murdanga and Harmonia at the same time, you can eat twice as much prasad, and four arms are better than two. People, they're mostly attracted by the, that awe and reverence, by the Aishvarja, Moi feature of the Lord. So Krishna hides his Braj Lila in that way, and he manifests it, that, that uh, Narayan Rup, a Chattabuj Narayan Rup. And most people think of, of Krishna in that way. But the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they understand that Aishvarja Priti Sankachita, that Aishvarja or opulence makes love shrink. And they see Krishna directly as you show the Nanda Nanda Nanda. So that's the answer to your first point. The second point you were saying, what was it about? They were praying to get. Uh, oh, oh, then how is it that Vasudeva and Devaki, they were praying? to get his son. But they had, their, first of all, they were doing austerities. And then the Nishoda, uh, their austerities were a little different. They were doing bhakti. They were observing uh, Dwadasi and Akadasi. Whereas in the case of Vasudeva and Devaki, it's also described in the Bhagavatam that from the mind of Vasudeva, Krishna was transferred to the mind of Devaki. Whereas in Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, it says that from the heart of Nanda Maharaj, Krishna was transferred to the heart of Yashoda. So there's a difference between the mood of Vasudeva and Devaki. When uh, Uddhava came to Vrindavan trying to, to give a message of love to the bridge Basis, he first of all tried to tell Nanda and Yashoda that Krishna is not your son. He's actually God. There's no reason for you to cry. He's everywhere. He's everybody's son. He's not really your son. And Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda said, what are you, crazy? He's not God. He's our son. He's our boy. Sometimes he tells lies. He does his wicked things sometimes. He steals butter and he does this and that. They couldn't understand that. But contrast that with the description in the 82nd chapter of the 10th canto. When Krishna and Balaram came before Vasudeva and Devaki and, and um, Kurukshetra, they began to pray to him, and they said, actually, you're not our son. You're Bhagavan, you're God. 
and Krishna was a little unhappy. That's not so sweet. So there's a difference in their mood. Yeah, I hope that helps sometimes. Okay. There's something to add. I have so many things to say, but I just remember Jamashtra Vachita Bhakti Vanya, he said, he said, uh, the difference of the mood. But I remember being distinctly uh, like a shirt of very limited how um, uh, devotee and Vasudev they pray uh, for uh, um, to have God and uh, to have some God as their son and uh, not that they should pray that uh, they have a son like God. <laughs> they wanted the sun type God, mm -hmm. but the adult uh, they were just really wanted uh, they wanted God as their son. Yes, she, she's but they wanted God. <laughs> so she, God. She's quoting uh, Bhakti Vigyanma, as you were saying, in um, Janmashtami, that, that uh, there's a difference in the prayers of Vasudeva and Devaki and Nandini showed in Vasudeva and Devaki, they were praying that may God become our son. Whereas Nandini showed they were praying that we have a son who's like God. <laughs> the subtle difference. And also, I really like about the chambers. So, that, that description of the book is the core entry of the book. And now that we've my book. And suddenly the picture changes. And I remember how uh, I once met Shoshara so much. It's just really like someone raised some scar in my heart and was walking here and he was walking there. And I took advantage and asked him a blessing. And then, you know, I asked, uh, can you bless me to pray uh, through a chin, um, feelingly, and then he was feeling like something like that. And he really joyfully laughed, and he said that uh, you are in my own home, this is the place. So, and I thought that I, I didn't understand what this was going to mean. You know, he said it was such a realization because he knows my own home. This mm -hmm. is the word about uh, you know, seeing now who they is. Because just by hearing that from him, that he said, You are my but this is the place. <laughs> and I don't know anything about it, but just by hearing that from him, that hey, that uh, there's something going on in my world that I want to commit to pressure and take part of See, she was just appreciating that, that uh, this story about Narantam Das Thakur and how he's entering these different chambers and how Mayapur is like this. And some of the devotees are telling her this thing. This is Mayapur Dham. This is such a special, special place. Thank you. Anybody else has anything? Okay. All right. We've kept everybody up really late. Thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakti Brindiki Prabhupada 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 Prabhup